Graphs that make lines all have an important characteristic in common. The rate of change is constant. We can represent this rate of change in different ways. For instance, if a car is driving 40 miles per hour, we can see the constant rate of change with a sequence. It's 220 miles to San Diego, and we get 40 miles closer every hour. We can see the constant rate of change with a table. He starts 220 miles from San Diego. and gets 40 miles closer every hour. The table shows us that after driving 40 miles per hour for five hours, he's only 20 miles from San Diego. After six hours, he's gone 20 miles past San Diego. We can see the constant rate of change with a recursive rule. Start with 220 and subtract 40 for every hour you drive. can see the constant rate of change with an equation. The distance from San Diego equals 220 minus 40 times the number of hours. And we can see the constant rate of change with a graph. We start 220 miles from San Diego. And every hour we get 40 miles closer. At this point we should ask ourselves, does it make sense to connect the points? In this case it does make sense because it's okay to have 1.2 hours. So we'll go ahead and connect the points. Notice that to get to the next point on the graph, we move down 40 units on the y-axis and one unit right. The points on the graph show that the data is linear. Let's take a closer look at the relationship between the graph and the recursive rule. The recursive rule is start with 220, then keep subtracting 40. The graph has a starting point of 0, 0,220. and a rate of change of negative 40. So the graph and the recursive rule tell us exactly the same thing. Here's another example about the relationship between recursive rules and their graphs. A bicyclist, one mile or 5,280 feet away from Arvin, 
pedals toward Arvin at a rate of 600 feet per minute. A jogger in Arvin starts running toward the bicyclist at a rate of 200 feet per minute. How far away from Arvin will they be when they meet? The recursive rule for the biker is to start 5,280 feet away from Arvin and subtract 600 feet for every hour. The recursive rule for the walker is to start zero feet away from Arvin and then add 200 feet every minute. For the biker, we're subtracting 600 because the biker is getting closer to Arvin so their distance from Arvin is getting smaller. For the walker, we're adding 200 because their distance from Arvin is getting bigger. Let's put this information in a table. The biker starts 5,280 feet from Arvin. Every hour the biker gets 600 feet closer to Arvin. The jogger starts zero feet from Arvin and gets 200 feet further away every minute. The tables show us some interesting information. We see that after six hours, the bicyclist is still further away from Arvin than the jogger. But after seven hours, the jogger is further away from Arvin than the bicyclist. So that means somewhere between six and seven hours, the jogger and the bicyclist meet. Let's put this information in a graph. We'll start with the bicyclist. We notice that the lines cross but somewhere between six and seven hours. Just like we noticed from the table. Using the graph, we can estimate how far away from Arvin they will be when they meet. It looks like they'll meet about 1,300 feet from Arvin. We see that both of these graphs clearly show the starting points. And they also show the rates of change. In this lesson, you learn why lines have a constant rate of change. We also explored the close relationships between the recursive rules and their graphs.